What's up people, it's Lawrence Warner, also known as Cerulean here. It's Monday the 8th of August, so that can only mean one thing. It's the end of first week flip phone, using, this week, the light phone. I'll be telling you about the voice memos feature and directions in a minute, but firstly let's get that SIM card out. The guillotine into that. Most underrated skill of the 21st century is changing a SIM card. All right. Get the three SIM card out. Three claim that they're, they've they developed 5G. I'm trying to catch up with EE. But uh, I'm yet to see the benefits of it in this iPhone 10 at least. But who knows, maybe this month I will and I'll let you know. So that the hole's lined up. And now we turn on. You can see I'm filming this on my iPad, which I allow myself one hour a day of during... Have we got a battery? Yes, we have. And you can see also from the reflection at the family home down in Eastleigh before heading back up to Oxford to do my tutoring day job. Um, but yeah, no, I've got, um, I have got a fun clip to show today, which was up in Oxford last week. Canon indeed. <laughs> On the hearty chord. Like the mouse, like the flame. Once you've taken name. Victory awaits, so fire away, cannon and day, sail the waves. Whew. Hey. Like, only trust in Oxford that they would have, wow, they would have like a 17th century instrument um, that Packle Bell might have played on himself. Now that I don't have a smartphone detox buddy, although I did see my, my buddy Tushar, and, uh, I've put our podcast flip phone diaries on my Spotify, on the Cerulean Spotify um, playlist, artist playlist, so you can check that out from 2018 where this challenge all began. All right, there you go. That's the last week. Bam. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. First week of the month if you want me. Call me on my burner, couple flip phones, yeah nice little learner, too much from you on the gram, fam I'll burn ya, wish we flip like a burner, I'll spit fire bars and I'll burn ya, let me paint you a picture. Window when you've got a text, when you're doing a text message and then you can hit that button. Hi Ben, I'm saying this to you with my voice on the vlog. Let's read it back. I'm saying this to you. So it wasn't sure about the first bit, which is good because it was crap. I'm saying this to you with my voice on the blog, nearly. Let's read about. So only two mistakes. Not bad. I'm not sure what the AI working on this is and how privacy respecting it is. Like a bit like with directions, which is the very reason I'm using the light phone because I'm going between Oxford and Eastly, I don't know how good here.com are, but yeah, these directions have been pretty solid. You just always need to remember to turn a bit earlier than you think when you're driving. Uh, it's a little bit laggy. Um, uh, <clears throat> and yeah, it often goes into offline mode. But honestly, like this beats the punk for uh, if you need to move about. So yeah, I'm changing the last vlog name for the punk to going nowhere because I just think that like, that's just a quite a nice concept. It's it's why I would use the punk if I wanted a proper detox. I'm just in a place, almost on retreat. But yeah, if you actually a more viable option to live your life is the light phone. Carve, carve, so my creative week. Let's go and let's start with Skinny Man Counselor State of Mind. I bought the CD after having such a great experience. If you haven't seen it already, supporting Skinny Man, it's on my YouTube channel highlights. This guy is an absolute legend. Um, he's given me so much confidence with freestyling as MC Beastly. And uh, yes, yeah, so I thought I had to go dig in and go pay the 20 quid for one of the very minimal released numbers of CDs from 20 years ago that are still knocking about. Um, and I'll just do a little track review here. Um, so, fuck the hook. It's obviously, it's like, tell your A&Rs that one. Um, little Man is obviously like quite emotional because it's all based on his childhood trauma and he's basically trying to help the next generation of kids. Um, although he does have a bit of a QAnon sort of obsession about paedophiles, but anyway. 
Um, Love's Gone From The Streets has a really nice vocal hook. Like, the women that he works with on Female Singers, like, are so good. I don't know if he's involved in the writing of the hooks. Um, I'll Be Surprised is, like, for me, as a standout track. Now, for me, it's a, it, it, for me, it's the equivalent of a Tarantino movie. Like, it's a bit of a guilty pleasure because it's just, like, hyper-violent. But um, it's phenomenal. Like, it's pure energy. It's the hook's the main thing. Like, this should be charting right now, like, if it came out. Um... Put in, like and then these last one that's what I'm gonna do it's actually and then kind of say I think the back end tracks are quite more nuanced and like really amazing um so yeah I just think this album is just such an important album and obviously as hopefully you know by now and from the all FM interview um it's what inspired me to do the um vocal quotes bridging between the tracks for the divided selfie speaking of which um so this is one of the 20 limited edition CDs I printed um, and yeah I was about to send out number four to Richard Meesey bought it on Bandcamp and I played it in the Skoda just to check and it turns out Dolt um, me and my stepbrother managed to burn the tracks in slightly the wrong order so the vocal quotes don't actually work so family and friends two of them I'm going to off to reburn them two people who bought it at the Skinny Man gig Hit me up if you see this. Um, I'll reburn them for you. Um, and then, yeah, all the others are going to get reburnt in the correct order. Uh, it's like when you make a concept album, you've got to get the track in the right order. I feel like Adele to Spotify going like, put the track in the right order. It's got to be done. All right. Um, do love banging this one out in the car as well. All right, over to the Bandcamp purchases for the week. I'll do Jonas Campbell was on Small Town Dreamer, so I've got to go for him first. He's brought out this album, Another Side of Paradise. It's, it is beautiful. Um, I like the start track. Then Den in Blue, obviously. I'll play a little bit here. So let's skip a little bit. like just washing over you it's so beautiful the production is so layered so what I mean you should go compare it to the Small Town Dreamers kickoff where he was just playing at him on stage with a guitar and what's different is that the production's so layered and it's just like so it, it feels almost like jumping into a really nice soft bed and just like sinking into it and it just like layers over you um, his voice is still so if anything his voice sounds even more kind of vulnerable compared to the production um so yeah, I think big up to his um, um, producer person, Jack O'Hay, um, who did that in London, I think. London is a vibe. He's got some sort of J.E.M.W. Turner um, reference in the album artwork and the Beatles are in the image, which is cool. So he's clearly making some big references. I didn't necessarily latch onto them all. So feel free to comment, Jonas. There's Baker Street and A Sun Shines On as well, the other tracks, but I would thoroughly recommend as a debut EP, this is phenomenal work. Like he's a true poet and such a nice singer-songwriter. Um, someone who's a little further along his journey of Bandcamp music releasing is Heath McNeese. Some of you might know, he's on my Cerulean Sounds website as one of my like few inspirations of people who are doing both pop and rap like me. And this album is uh, his latest one. It's one of the longest album titles I've ever heard. Heart 8 Set to Music, a sonic curation of my most emotionally vulnerable and least commercially viable. And that's the title. It's like 20 words long. Classic band camp. And he, I don't know if he got that out to streaming with that title. But I just, you know, check this out at the start of the record, ready? One, two, as good as you can do. Straight in with this, like, again, very layered um, sort of singer songwriter music. But then Plato's Closet is a highlight for me because he raps. Such good melodies and vibes, like that whistle. They're like my production on real. That's his rapper voice. I don't know if this is a Plato's Cave reference or what, but. It's also beautiful. It's a breakup album. I mean, I can vibe with it a lot, as Small Town Dreamer was too. So, yeah, Small Town Dreamer A side at least, mainly, um, and Amanda Holden, of course. 
Um, yeah, man, like, it's just interesting to see two artists, both very talented singer-songwriters at different stages of their journey. Um, so go check out them. Right, on to books. Um, I've started reading an amazing book called The Hireling by L.P. Hartley. Um, and from L.P. Warner to L.P. Hartley. And, um, yeah, but these are ones that I've finished in the past, but I wanted to mention today because I just didn't get around to the Rosie Project, I don't think. Um, wow, this is phenomenal. Um, I mean, he basically is just like, he's basically like one of the funniest writers ever. I read this in two days and it's like set in Melbourne and it's basically about like a high functioning, very intelligent guy on the Asperger's sort of spectrum. I'm um, trying to find love and it's just, it's sympathetic, but also beautiful. Would recommend. Um, and then I went back to Raymond Chandler cause I was watching Ace Ventura Pet Detective and as you'll see on my letterbox review, I'm kind of trying to preemptively defend it from the inevitable cancellation because of what seems today like a kind of transphobic plotline. Basically, I would argue that that's a very kind of a historical viewpoint on it. It's essentially like they didn't particularly take that trans seriously as like an identity group back in the early 90s. And it was more like an a, almost for them, it was like a ridiculous plot that kind of took to the extreme earlier film noir tropes like from the Raymond Chandler era about like mistaken identity so if you go to Farewell My Lovely it's about a girl who is pretending to be all high class but she was actually a stripper to start so essentially uh, Tom Shadjack and co are basically like taking that idea to what they saw as like a comic extreme people I mean I'd say there's definitely homophobia because of how he's like reacts to them thinking it was a man that he kissed but yeah I just I just feel that like it's important to you know, also identify the amazing things about the work, like how he's so, like how Jim Carrey is so like free expression wise. And that can be really inspiring to people like my buddy, Pete Bennett, who's famously on Big Brother with Tourette's. He's a real inspiration for him. So yeah, I just felt like I was speaking about that, but it was good to bring some historical reference from Raymond Chandler. Um, just because like, you know, it's, it's good. I went back to The High Window, which is the third one, which might be my favorite. Um, and you know, again, there's like, yeah, it's just really interesting. Um, going back to this time when, you know, they didn't have the internet and people really could, you know, change their identity more, um, easily. And people are always trying to catch people out for it. Um, but, um, yeah, no, it's, uh, really good. I mean, this is the whole series of the Philip Marlowe novels, um, would definitely recommend, it's really cool. Um, and I like how this kind of looks both like broken matches and like a window. Um, so yeah, um, that's it for today. What's coming up next week? Well, next month. Um, next month, I will be the first month of first week of September, starts Monday the 5th of September. I'm hoping to go to the Sappho Music Networking night that night to talk about London Wars of Vibe. Um, I, yeah, basically... I'm not super like sure on exactly what I'm doing that week. So it'll be hopefully some interesting stuff. I'll try and use the punk a little bit more and talk about that. But yeah, hoping everyone's cool. And um, yeah, Wednesday live stream, like I'm not really sure if I'm going to be able to like, if I'm going to be doing it every Wednesday anymore. I mean, this Wednesday I'm going to see Closer, uh, the play in London and it ends at five. So I'm not really sure if I'm going to be able to go live at five. And now I'm not committed to doing the Jester song every week. I don't know if there's going to be an every week Wednesday live stream. Um, let me know in the comments if you like enjoy that regularity, but otherwise I might just try and produce some higher quality pre-recorded stuff like reviewing cover songs and stuff. Let me know what you think y'all. But anyway, first week vlogs will keep coming to the end of this year. But again, I'm not really sure if I'm going to do it next year because the view count's really fallen off. So please share the playlist out. It's coming up on the end screen in a minute. Um, you know, social song, is going to be out by Halloween. So all seven are out now. We're into August. So yeah, I'm going to be previewing ours, which is the A side. And yeah, this one's a good little hit on social media for sure. So yeah, keep an eye out for this track coming before Halloween. And um, yeah, see you on the flip side. Read my spit fire tweets, never read them for three tick tock tick tock on the clock because we're back on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, burner, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, we're back on.
first week of the month if you want me. Call me on my burner. Shh, couple clip phones.